So this presentation will be about uh, Kafka and AI ML, and we have two speakers. First one is Jaya. Jaya is a technical marketing manager at Red Hat with the application services team. Uh, she loves to talk about Red Hat technologies um, and how they can help customers address the challenges. She's very experienced working with partners uh, as a full stack developer. And the second pres presenter today is Ritesh. Uh, Ritesh is a principal architect at Red Hat uh, at the portfolio and technology team. And he's focused on making applications intelligent and deploying them in cloud environments with DevSecOps in mind. And with that, guys, I'm handing over to you. Um, the floor is yours. Enjoy the session. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Hey, everybody. Hope you're all keeping well. OK, today's session, we are you are going to talk about how AIML and Kafka can come together to help you build a sentiment analysis uh, application. Uh, what we will have a look at today is how AIML, data, and Kafka can help you to build powerful intelligent applications. And then bring in uh, event-driven approach, event-driven architecture to this, uh, throwing in k-native and cloud events to you know flesh the whole solution out to make it truly event-driven. Then we will have a demonstration at the end of it. Um, we, we, we uh, plan to spend a lot of time in the demonstration because we invite you to be part of the demonstration as well. Um, the demonstration is all about uh, how customer reviews on a retail website needs to be moderated as well as analyzed for a, a sentiment rating, a sentiment score. Okay, before we get to the demo, a little bit of uh, uh, what you call background check in regards to uh, what we are, um, what the solution is all about, how we are right with the solution, how we pick the technologies and all of that. We know that data is like gold dust, especially data which is organized and of which you can make sense out of. Data can help make uh, decisions uh, with confidence and helps organizations as well as the extent customers, right? Uh, and AIML can help data become more productive. It simplifies the extracting of value from the data in an automated fashion. For example, customers you can learn uh, about the customer's behavior and thereby improve customer experience. You gain competitive advantage because you understand your customers better. You can automate some of the business processes, thereby leading to perhaps increased revenue, saving of cost. And overall, you have a much better solution because you actually understand the data and are able to derive a sense out of the data that you have. Here are a few examples of AIML use cases. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you here would uh, actually know um, quite a bit of this or perhaps even uh, help to add uh, to our use cases. Feel free to use the comment section to add your uh, your perhaps use cases where you have used AIML, AIML and data together. Uh, so if you look at it, looking at a few examples, perhaps in retail industry, you may look at use customer behavior and patterns to arrive at particular promotions. Or in a manufacturing plant, uh, the data inference can help you to change processes such that machines which are uh, you know, failing uh, and products which are not up to standard, you can perhaps identify use cases such as that. So fundamentally, um, you get data, you inference that so that you can make um, qualified decisions on top of that. Now, there is no disputing that AML and data is very critical for organizations. But imagine what can be achieved if you can you're able to respond to the data in real time, or at least perhaps close to real time, as close to real time as possible. This is easily possible with Kafka, which is a distributed streaming platform. In the last session, I think we spoke about Kafka in, at, at length, right? With regards to it being a real time data streaming platform, which it can handle very high throughputs. What does this mean from an AIML application standpoint? This means that you can ingest process data, which is generated, and then you can make um, real-time or close to real-time AIML um, or your AIML applications can make uh, real-time or close to real-time decisions and you can make you know uh, decision making and insights all of them can be as close to real-time as possible. Um, Kafka's uh, distributed architecture also helps you to handle large amounts of data because uh, which is essential for AIML workloads and uh, we also know that our data arrives from various sources, various streams Kafka can help can act as a central data integration um, hub, allowing you to collect data from various streams and various forms and multiple sources, consolidate them, and use a variety of um, you know technologies uh, which can help you to perhaps enhance the data as well. 
to provide a unified screen for your intelligent applications. Uh, with even triggering, even uh, triggering AML processes, you can also react to changes in data, and um, which again help you to make real-time decisions. Kafka's messaging model helps you to build an event-driven architecture that much more easier. Of course, data durability, retention, uh, building up, being able to perhaps rewind, uh, you know, go back, go back in time, and uh, all of those features of Kafka can also help AML applications to access historical data whenever you need them. Now, uh, but if you look at event-driven architecture, uh, event-driven architecture could potentially be a little bit daunting. Uh, how do you set up your, um, how do you, you know, set up your system? How do you build your application? Uh, how do you even uh, connect with Kafka? Um, do we have to learn to consume and produce through Kafka streams when a lot of application developers have primarily been using HTTP as the fundamental protocol, right? But the, so basically, you may be considering that, like, you know, okay, uh, is it going to be hard for us to, um, you know, move on to a Kafka-based data streaming um, software platform kind of a thing? But uh, what when we bring in event-driven architecture based on Knative, uh, based which has be which Red Hat OpenShift serverless is based upon, uh, it makes takes away the semantics of streaming. Uh, so as a developer, you can continue to focus on what you typically would know, you know, just using HTTP endpoints, which is basically what the uh, Knative services help you to do. So Knative uh, service, Knative eventing helps you to bring all of those various the sources, the sinks, the endpoints, all of them in a in a in a network. Of, um, of systems which can talk to each other using cloud events. Cloud events is nothing but um, a protocol and open an API specification, if I may, for uh, um, transferring events from system to system. In the demonstration, we will show you uh, how we have used cloud events and how Knative uh, plays a picture, uh, plays a role into this entire architecture, and how all of this comes together. Now, from Red Hat's perspective, um, we have uh, we provide a fundamental platform plus application services for you to be able to build, manage, deploy uh, all kinds of applications, right from traditional applications uh, to serverless applications, uh, to integration APIs, data, AM, and then all of that that we spoke about uh, through application foundations uh, being one set of technologies and open shift data science. So you can cover a gamut of, uh, you know, gamut of technologies, gamut of, um, how do you want to work for it, gamut of, uh, things that you need your applications to do. For example, you want to integrate your applications, you want to build inter intelligent applications, you want to be able to do streaming, you want to use a camel, you want to do serverless, or, or DevSecOps, CDC, and all of that, right? It, it is, um, this entire portfolio helps you to uh, build out a robust um, platform for you to realize your, you know, then end applications on top of this. Um, I would like also like to introduce OpenShift Data Science, which is a hi hybrid MLOps platform. I did speak about AIML. The hybrid ML, uh, MLOps platform, this OpenShift Data Science, uh, it helps uh, helps data scientists, um, platform guys, developer, developers, DevOps guys, all of them bring all of them together to be able to build out uh, whatever you need from an MLOps perspective. Uh, provides you model development features, gives you model serving and monitoring features out of the box and lifecycle management so that you can have repeatable uh, data science pipelines. And you can also integrate this to your DevOps pipeline so that the models that you build, generate, and deploy can be delivered across the enterprises. Um, combining Red Hat components, open source software, your own software, IAC, uh, we have a huge uh, partner base software as well. You can bring all of that so that you can increase your capabilities and collaboration uh, features. Okay, that was a lot of talking. Well, I think seven odd minutes of talking. Uh, so we would we we think that a demo is worth. Um, we can count the zeros there, but uh, a many number of words. Uh, what what we are going to introduce today is um, is a fictitious retail company that we would like to call Globex. Um, now Globex is on a digital transformation journey. They have they have experienced great success with their microservice architecture. They have introduced streaming technologies for certain areas of their business. They also have partners and they have APIs and all of that. Now they also would like to understand more about their own customers. What do the customers like? Which sections of their, um, what, what do the customers want to see at different points in time? For example, we introduced new tech, new products uh, last month. Are they performing well? 
or uh, is a customer sentiment going down, going up? Is it just the same? Uh, the various pricing points, is that, is that making any effect or impact uh, on the actual business of it, right? So what they would actually like to do is have a look at the reviews that customers post on their website. And then two things, right? They once you introduce moderation, uh, introduce a reviews for products, you of course would like to moderate those reviews to ensure that there is no abusive language or even, um, even look at uh, perhaps a certain uh, private information should not be shared online. Uh, then also look at building out a sentiment analysis dashboard, um, looking at the language of the, uh, the sentiment of the reviews and come up with a score on various catalogs uh, of the various categories of the products that this Globex customers, customer offers. And so they bring in Kafka and AML to build out a platform where the reviews can flow gently down the stream till they can reach us your, uh, the dashboard and start you know, showcasing the dashboard. Um, this is like a like an overview of how we have brought in all of the you know pieces together. Um, so starting off with right right over here, uh, starting off with an application, and the user provides an, um, a review. They submit the review. The review flows as HTTP. Like I said, even though it is going to be consumed by Kafka, it still flows as HTTP because of the underlying Knative framework, Knative Eventing framework. And once that in, that um, uh, <clears throat> gets into the AMQ Streams platform, or it gets into the Kafka uh, platform, you can have multiple consumers. Uh, one of the consumers is going to start analyzing this uh, re uh, this review, uh, and then pushes that information into a time series database. Uh, we have picked uh, InfluxDB as a time series database, uh, and once that is passed through in InfluxDB, it creates all of those buckets and all of the tags and all of those points. Uh, then the, that information is used by Grafana uh, to build out a sentiment dashboard. In the meanwhile, in parallel, because I cannot show it in parallel, I'm showing it sequentially, but in parallel, what also happens is that the same message, right? Right from here, it passes on, on to um, analyzing of the service. If the language is acceptable, it gets persisted, and then you can start seeing that message on, this, on, the, on, this, on the screen. Uh, now, that is the application architect's perspective. When you're building out an architecture, especially an AML plus intelligent applications, when with all of these services and microservices in picture, we have different personas here. We also have on the right hand side how a data scientist would actually build out these analyzing, analyze um, the services which can analyze the sentiment as, uh, as well as analyze the language uh, for them. Uh, I invite um, Ritesh to please you know, uh, help us to describe that section of that. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Jaya. Thank you, Jaya. Yeah, I hope, uh, yeah, just my screen will come up now. Uh, my, uh, yeah, there is it, right? So this is where Jaya actually uh, brought me in as a data scientist. And like we are trying to wear different hats here. I'll be wearing data scientist and admin hat, hat here. And so this is all about data scientists. Uh, so you as a data scientist, like, like uh, go to, um, so we have, as Jaya mentioned, we have read at OpenShift Data Science, right? So that's where, uh, as a data scientist, I will actually go and and start, let's say, a server, a Jupyter Hub, for example. In this case, I'll I'll work through, I'll uh, do train my model, I'll build my model, and then I will kind of like push that model into a repository, right? So that's an intelligent app source code repository here. Now this source code repository, uh, once uh, <clears throat> I check in a new model, it, I'm trying to build an MLOps here, right, using GitOps methodology. So the moment I check in a specific new model here, uh, the whole uh, Tekton pipeline, OpenShift pipeline kind of like kicks in here, it gets triggered, and then it clones uh, your repo, it builds the new image, it actually scans for a lot of uh, things like it will scan for vulnerability, whether it's coming from the right developer or not, whether it's a trusted source, trusted party or not, right? So those kind of things are, are done as part of the image scanning. And then uh, we tag the image, that image kind of like, gets created and tagged and it, and we store it in our query image re registry, right? And then we also push it into dev environment uh, so that uh, uh, we test that everything is working fine in my dev environment, again, on an OpenShift platform. Now, this is the whole continuous integration pipeline, right? And at the end, I do not push anything into production here. I actually create update manifest, which is managed by Argo CD separately as part of the continuous deployment or continuous delivery as part of GitOps process. 
so that I completely isolate my dev process, which is CI, uh, with, a, with, an, uh, with a continuous deployment process, which is to Argo CD. Now what Argo CD will do is, it will say, okay, here is my manifest for the prod environment, which is kind of like different than what now I have actually deployed in prod deployment, right? Because I changed the image type because there's a new imaging query registry, which is being managed uh, and which is actually being changed in my manifest repo. So the Argo CD will do a reconcile loop. We'll see, oh, there is a change in the image uh, and it has to move in a new image. That's a new model which gets in, checked in into the production environment. Then. And yeah, that's the whole life cycle which you don't have to manage as a data scientist. You just have to manage your specific development and that kind of like kicks in the whole uh, gamut of CICD process and brings in the MLOps, uh, uh, which everyone is talking about nowadays, right? <clears throat> so let me show you quickly on the rods, the Red Hat OpenShift Data Science and the Jupyter Hub, like what I was talking about. <clears throat> so here I have this uh, Red Hat OpenShift Data Science configured here on my environment. If you see here, I can kind of like go and enable a specific Jupyter Hub. I can launch a Jupyter Hub here, right? Uh, which I, we have already have predefined images. Uh, and you can, of course, bring in your own custom image as well here. So let's say I create a standard, and then I just say start a server. And this will actually uh, start a specific server for me, and it will keep going on. Now, I will just cancel it for the sake of time because it takes a minute to get the server up. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of things you can explore. There are a few things which are already there as part of the uh, applications here, and there's a whole lot of marketplace here which uh, for the OpenShift data science, so you can do a lot of things. You can actually uh, set up a data science project. You can work with Kubeflow along with integrated Tecton pipeline. We can actually do model serving here, so you can just check in your model code. It will be served for your uh, applications, right? So that's something which is possible here in OpenShift data science. And of course, like Jay mentioned, it's managed services or on-site, on-prem, right? Both options are available for you. So there are many, many things which you can do here. There are a lot of resources available for you to kind of like walk through and see how you can use ROTS platform to actually do uh, things which you want to do as part of your AI ML application uh, specific requirements, how quickly you can actually onboard your data scientists to quickly move on to uh, actually hosting your models, right? And then also managing the uh, machine, like the MLOps uh, for your models. So how quickly you can uh, kind of like move a new model into production um, uh, through your, right through sitting through your uh, Jupyter Hub here. And this is the Jupyter Hub, which I already had created one. So here you actually uh, clone your repo, which I have done. And then the moment you do that, you get a pre configured image specific Jupyter Hub here. Let's say if you want to do a PyTorch or you want to have TensorFlow, you have those images there. You just start the Jupyter Hub, uh, mention the GPUs you want to, right? It will actually set up GPUs as well for you. If you want NVIDIA GPUs, it will set it up for you as well. And then you kind of like start with processing. It's very simple, like you can do a lot of things here in Jupyter Hub. Of course, the data scientists know. It's something, an equivalent of VS Code, which uh, generally an application developer uses, right, in their environment. Of course, I know that a lot of data scientists use either of that, uh, but this kind of like gives you a very good flow in terms of uh, how it works. And this is my, basically, uh, um, um, a process, which is a sentiment analysis, where I'm using Hugging Face-based uh, algorithm for doing sentiment analysis here. I see here, this is the model which I call in, right, uh, through, uh, it's a bird-based uh, multilingual uh, uncased uh, sentiment, an which anal analyze based on the text. So you will actually be participating in here. You will actually be sending in the text, uh, the comments on the products uh, through the fictitious company UI, which we have, and that will actually be going through this particular model, which is hosted on OpenShift and will actually process it. It will also analyze and moderate the language as well, right? So we have uh, multiple Kafka, streams where the data gets pushed in and then it's pulled again by the inputs db uh, which kind of like goes and 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 populates everything into grafana dashboard so we'll talk about that as well quickly yeah so this is uh, what i wanted to show from the uh, amelops gitops perspective as well as how the data scientists can actually play their role here and and it becomes their life and makes their life very easy right so over, over to you, Jaya, back on the application side uh, discussion again, uh, before I actually walk them through the Grafana and dashboards. Yeah, let's let the mic quickly get the dashboard screen for you. 
Thank you so much, Rajesh. Uh, now we switch hats again <laughs> uh, and we look at how this entire architecture, architecture has been put together, right? Or the application side of things. How do you bring all of them uh, once the once the model has been deployed on the self same Open Shift? Uh, Open Shift can provide you a platform for you to build out everything that you need uh, to realize this uh, sentiment analysis application. So what you have here is the AIML uh, application is running as um, services as a K-native services, which basically that's what this hundred percent and all of that shows. Based, uh, that means that you can um, you can you can you know it can be. Um, Scaled up, scaled down to zero, and all of that. And if you look at these, um, these things, uh, the things are the ones which are again part part of the event-driven architecture, the K-native um, um, family, which helps you to talk to Kafka through a, a broker. So basically, you have a Kafka source. You have various things through which you actually talk um, talk to to Kafka, not necessarily having to you know speak to Kafka directly. But uh, just just because we're introducing um, the K-native services here and the K-native eventing does not mean that you cannot talk to Kafka directly. You can have different use cases which want to be want to talk to the underlying Kafka streaming platform, uh, depending upon um, your developers, depending upon um, your architecture needs, and uh, whatever what those kind of you know uh, parameters uh, for a particular application. All right, so then we have uh, a database in this case, we are using a Python service. And uh, as I said, this application is a, is a all, it's, it's been going on for a while. So there are different uh, features of, the, of this application. So that is why this particular um, project within uh, this particular namespace within, uh, within um, the sentiment analysis namespace only shows the services which are necessary for us to build, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, which is necessary as for us to build the analysis or, or product reviews or moderation. There are so many other services that we are using from a from a service perspective. The Globex the Globex service has got all of the underlying database for your category, inventory, typically everything that you would need for your uh, application. And then you have a middleware and project which basically has got everything that you need for building out your um, uh, everything that you would need uh, for building out your Kafka services. And, and all of that. Uh, all right, so um, now that we have seen this, uh, I'm just gonna launch this application here, which I have already done. This is how the page looks like. Um, and then um, as every, each um, each page would need you to provide a, um, provide a review and I submit a review, but for that you would need to log in. Um, but for this purpose, we are actually going to ask for your help here right now. Um, that I want you to be able to please pull out your phones perhaps and scan that UI with your phone or I can even uh, you know share the URL as well. Yeah, I, I shared the URL in the chat oh, so great. you guys Thanks. can just check it out. You yeah you have the username um, you can you can just launch that URL um, let me just post only the URL separately. Provide any one of those, uh, you know, usernames and passwords, and then you can log in. Um, once you log in, try start typing in our, uh, this thing. So let yeah, us so have. You want to, yeah, yeah, you want to show the blank screen of the computer? Yeah, actually, yeah. So already the blank screen started f filling up with some data. Okay, great. So I'm going to stop <laughs> sharing my screen and hand it over to you, Ritesh. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, I think um, uh, let's. Let's let the screen come up. Uh, yeah, there it is. So yeah, we are having uh, a few guys who are actually pushing the data in here. So once you log in there onto the screen, uh, you select a product and just uh, comment uh, like whatever you want to comment, uh, um, good, bad, right? And then uh, it will actually pass on and and go to to a topic called globex dot uh, um, sentiment. Oh, there it is, right? See, I um, mean, yeah. Cool. So it's 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 a live demonstration. So this actually talks to me. The Globex customer sentiment gives me overall sentiment for my uh, all all my products in my organization, right? So it tells me how many positive sentiments there are, negative sentiments, and the neutral, right? So um, this talks about the whole product, uh, all the products as an organization, right? How customers are are feeling about uh, our organization. Now. Uh, 
coming back to the categories, right? I have different set of categories here, like clothing, mags, and and uh, I see that most of them have actually uh, given a feedback, uh, customer feedback on clothing, right? For example, so if I zoom in here, I see that for the clothing category on this row, um, I have a lot of uh, uh, requests, which in the comments which have come here, right? Uh, and that kind of like shows uh, live in Grafana here. It shows me how what is the sentiment view, what was the last sentiment of uh, for a specific product, right? If sometimes I just want to know what is the last sentiment. Uh, then uh, again, this is for the bags part here. So bags uh, right now we don't have much to show in this case, but uh, let me just go back to the five minutes part. Yeah, here it is, right? So these are for the bags here. So I see there are a few uh, sentiments which are cooked into some of the customers online are actually some of the uh, participants online are participating and giving huge feedback here, right? So we almost have like 46 plus seven plus three, right? That many reviews have come in here and uh, through this live session. So thank you all for participating and providing a feedback here. That's great. So this is the dashboard. So what it does is it actually, if you see here, there are all the Kafka topics which I have, right? So all the inputs goes into this Kafka reviews topic, right? So this is where everything comes in, right? Whether it's a bad uh, language-based uh, uh, message, everything comes in here. And uh, it actually gets analyzed by uh, the, uh, there are two uh, machine AIML uh, models which I have, which kicks in here. And there is one which does the moderation. There is other, another one which does the sentiment analysis. Um, and it actually kind of like pushes uh, if if it is a bad language, it gets into your reviews denied uh, topic. If it is a uh, it is something which is like uh, an okay language, it gets into moderated uh, reviews, and then the sentiment of the specific message gets into reviews of sentiment. Right? For example, in this case, it goes here, and then you can see these are all reviews here. If I select a specific message, it kind of like tells me, or oh, this is a it actually gives me a score and a positive or a negative scenario. Right? So that is the score which you see here as well for the uh, for some of the comments. For example, if I go to clothing here, you see there is a three, there is a zero, and there is a minus one, which is a negative comment, right, on a specific product set. So that's how I, I can actually have a dashboard. I have a good view of this. And then Kafka Drop actually tells me uh, what kind of messages I'm coming, which topics are working. and um, uh, then uh, you also have another observability functionality, right? In OpenShift, sitting in OpenShift. So you go to OpenShift, uh, there is metrics, there's dashboard here. So I go to dashboard and uh, I kind of like uh, get get a populated dashboard here, right? So for example, these these are all the API performances which it shows on my OpenShift. Uh, let's say I, we are doing an eventing based, uh, cloud event based triggering here, right? So broker trigger scenario. So you see here, uh, I have a uh, lot of events which are coming in here and it kind of like shows me real time how it's performing, right? Uh, uh, how about the ingress part uh, with the event count by response code here and this is uh, by the event type here, right? Uh, so I can actually select a lot of other things. For example, it's a Kafka sync here, see? Um, there are a lot of event counts by event types again here as by, because we are actually using, as Jay mentioned, we use a Kafka sync where the data gets, um, uh, Entering right as part of the uh, comment you push in, so that's uh, the Kafka sync and how it's behaving right now. So you actually see this in real time, and not only this, right? But you also can you integrate this with OpenTrace and uh, have your all your uh, developer uh, doing tracing, right, for for their own specific application in terms of how it's behaving at a deep dive in the code, and also you can use like Eager, for example, uh, for doing the open tracing. So uh, and yeah, and another thing I want to show you here is that uh, we actually have all our deployments sitting right here. We have InfluxDB database, Grafana, and there is a connector which actually copies everything from Kafka to InfluxDB. And then we have uh, the sentiment analysis. So this is where we have our uh, uh, moderation uh, program codes running. There are product reviews which are uh, part of the uh, which are part of the simulator in case if you want to simulate your data here. So this is my moderate review uh, deployment uh, and this is my sentiment analysis deployment. So if I select this and I go to the pods, right? Uh, the pods will actually show me what kind of events, uh, whatever is getting into 
Kafka, right? And then uh, being analyzed before that, that's and the outcome, that's all uh, given, generated here as part of logs as well. So that was uh, all about how an administrator can actually view this. And um, that's that's all I wanted to show here and uh, moving it back to uh, Jaya for the closure notes and maybe Mike can share the slides uh, for Jaya as well. Thank you. Yeah, I think we lost your voice. Yeah, that was fixed by a click of a button. I had muted myself. Thanks. Uh, okay. So what I was saying is, Rafael, I'm sorry that the page was kind of slow. I, I hope you were able to access, that, access it later. Um, and um, so the, just one thing I would like to add from an application perspective is that, like I said, each of these events are being, um, are being you know, shared from one system to the other through what is called cloud events. And uh, that is being achieved as a header for each of the messages. So you, you can see right over here that the CE source is, uh, and the CE type and the CE ID timing and all of that helps you to, to trace back your messages and also to be able to deliver your messages where exactly you should, uh, you should be going. And if, I, if you go back to the architecture or the, or the deployment, uh, really, uh, if you look at um, the, the, the broker, the, it, it tells you each of these bro events, each of these filters respond to different things. For example, um, the source and the type again gets matched, and depending upon this, uh, the source and the type, the various services get called. Uh, you might be wondering why there are so many messages. Oh, because that is because we did generate a few of them for us to be able to show you how the Grafana dashboard can, uh, you know, close to real time, pull all the data, crunch it up. Uh, pass through the AML, uh, then right on to um, going and show, show, showcasing on the on the real dashboard. Right? All right. Okay. So with that, we kind of come to the end of those uh, discussion. What we would like to leave back with you is the the code base um, and the instructions for you to try this out. Uh, we can take a picture of this and perhaps um, um, we will leave a link also to this page. Do you have a link? Hello, we have handy handy for this solution pattern. If you could um, just drop it over on the chat window, that'll be great. So you can yeah. go, the tech is right over here. Uh, let me I will share through the link to this tech as well. Let me take that out and share it with you, so you can actually go ahead and um, uh, and access this the the tech as well as the instructions and and all of that. So here you go. And this, this deck has got information, in the, obviously, the deck itself. And also, it has got uh, all of that, everything that you need uh, to try it out in your, in your own um, uh, environments. Uh, the scripts, the code base, the images, and all of that, you can access it through that. Um, and to learn more about data sciences, we all, like I said, we have a sandbox and, and everything else, um, all of that English web drive. OK, so that's, that's about it. Um, yeah. So if someone wants to deploy it, they can just go ahead and deploy this in their open environment. Yeah. Available. Open cluster. Yeah, when Ansible playbook, just run that. You can um, try out the whole thing, instructions and all of that is there in that um, URL. So questions, please. I think we have five minutes before we close this. Yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left, so I don't see any questions at the moment in the chat, but if there are any questions, Feel free to, to post them now, quickly, <laughs> before we wrap, wrap up the session. Um, and in the meantime, let me thank you, Jaya and Ritesh, for, for this presentation. Um, perfectly delivered. Thank you very much for that, also for the demo. Um, like I said at the beginning, we will share all the slides and, and all the materials. If you didn't get the chance to take a photo or, or take a uh, direct of the, of the link, we will share that out, no problem. Um, what's next? In about 10 minutes, um, we'll have a break, or you can join the, the chat. There will be a chat discussion um, where you can participate. And then half an hour later, uh, the keynote of the Deaf Nation will start. So you're more than welcome to join that too. Um, so I don't see any questions. So I guess we just wrap it up. Um, again, thank you very much, uh, Chai Ritesh, for, for the presentation. Thanks, everyone, for uh, attending. And I wish you all a great event and a great day. 
uh, ahead yeah. of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Have a good day.